Hi, Cat's Cradle here. We continue to be overrun with tomatoes. Not that I'm complaining, they're a blessing. We've had so many that the other night Prepper A decided that for dinner she'd make a little centerpiece out of tomatoes. So she put her two favorites here, the uh, Cherokee Purples. That's her favorite. Boy, they sure are good. She went out front and cut a little bit of ivy and one little sad chrysanthemum that was blooming out of season and she made a little centerpiece for dinner which I thought was sweet. And it looked pretty actually. The red and green was very, very nice. Well, I've had uh, the occasion this season to make two big batches of tomato soup and it sure is delicious. And I'm going to explain the process to you a little bit. The first thing I do is extract the juice and the pulp from my tomatoes and you can see how I do that if you watch my video, uh, the review of the Norpro sauce maker. But you don't have to have a sauce maker to make uh, delicious tomato products. You can actually blanch your tomatoes and peel them and then grind them up in a food mill. If you don't know what that is, you can uh, Google it and uh, go to images and see a picture of that. Or you can put them in your blender. If you like the seeds, you're done at that point. If you don't like the seeds, you'll have to strain those out with a strainer and just push the pulp, pulp through. So anyway, I've got my, my juice, my pulp, all my goodness of my tomatoes simmering in a pot. And then I turn my attention to the vegetables that are going to season it. And if you start at the 12 o'clock position, I'll just go around and tell you what they are. Those are beautiful sliced uh, pieces of garlic uh, that I grew in my garden. That's at the 12 o'clock position. As you come on around to about 1 o'clock, that's red bell pepper. I prefer red to green. I just think it intensifies and makes uh, the soup even redder, which I like. Then that's diced celery, grated carrots, and diced onions. Those were grown in my garden as well. And I put about a tablespoon of butter in that and saute it for just about five minutes. And then I add about a cup of water and put the lid on and simmer those until they're soft. Then you can either put those in the blender and, and grind them up until they're smooth or you can use an immersion blender until they're smooth. I usually put a couple of cups of the hot tomato in there just to add a little liquid makes it a little easier to, to blend up. And then I add that to my pot and I simmer it for just a little while with a few other things that I'll list in the recipe below. Some salt, some pepper, ground cloves. For the pepper I don't usually use black pepper for several reasons. One I don't like seeing the black specks in my tomato soup. The other reason is I find that sometimes black pepper gets a little bitter after it's been uh, canned for a long time. So I use red pepper flakes. You can use black pepper if you want to. I just prefer the red pepper flakes. And uh, then all that is blended together. The tomato pulp and juice and these ground up vegetables. And then I'll let it simmer for just a little while. I taste it to see if it's too tart. If it's too tart, then I add a little bit of brown sugar. And you really do that to taste however much you, however much you like in it. I don't know uh, what your tartness comfort level is. And then I get my jars out. Generally, I have my jars washed and uh, rinsed and then I have them sitting on a cookie sheet that has been in the oven at 250 degrees and then when they're ready I bring them out and put the funnel in the top of the bottle and then be begin ladling the soup in. I just go ladle by ladle. Generally uh, a ladle it'll take about seven ladles to fill up a quart jar and I fill it up to that first ring as the neck begins to get small. That gives you one inch head space. That's pretty typical if you're pressure canning. I remove the funnel carefully, wipe the rim with a clean damp paper towel. Going all around. The jar is really hot so you have to be careful. Then I reach in with my little magnetic wand lifter. I'm looking, I only have one uh, small, small mouth lid in there because I only had one small mouth jar heated so I was searching for that. I screw mine on pretty tight. Then I get my jar lifter and carefully, being sure to lift it high enough, put it in my canner. Your canner will develop a line on it where the water is supposed to go. 
and then it's a lot easier to figure that out. I'm also going to do a video on that for you. I let the steam vent out the vent pipe for 10 minutes so it looks like a little geyser coming up for 10 minutes. Then I put the weight on. I bring it to 10 pounds of pressure and pressure can it for 20 minutes and it comes out just gorgeous. I take it out and set it on a towel on my counter so that I don't have a hot jar sitting on a cold counter and run the risk of breakage. I let it sit there with no drafts. Be sure you don't have any fan running and if you do just cover the hot towels with a, I mean the hot jars with a dish towel to keep the the, uh, the air, the cool air from blowing on them. I leave them sit for 24 hours then I take the uh, rings off and I wash the jars and then I label them and then I put them on my shelf. I hope you'll give tomato soup a try. It's something delicious to have in the winter if you like tomato soup. We love it with grilled cheese sandwiches. It's one of Prepper A's favorites so I really like to have it on hand. Uh, just let me know if you have any questions. Just uh, leave a comment in the comment section below or send me a PM and I'll be happy to get back to you. Hope you give it a try. Cat's Cradle.